Today, we're going to look at how to do the large eye effect in Eminem's video for Godzilla. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve. As you can tell, I've already imported the footage. The footage here is from ArtGrid. Uh, I did a video on them recently. I'll link to that in the description below. Right here, we have our three nodes. The first two nodes are just corrector nodes. I adjusted the contrast on the first one. The second one, I did a little bit of color correction. This is how it came in from the website. Third node over here is where we're going to make that effect where we can make the eyes larger. So as you can tell over here, I already have the open effects panel open. If you don't have it open, you can click up here on the right hand corner and that will bring up all your different effects. So if we scroll to the bottom, there's a tool, there's an effect called Warper. So I'll click on that, drag it to our third node and we can start making our adjustments. I'll leave everything that the way that it is. And in fact, we're probably not even going to touch this uh, top section over here. So we can leave that alone. What this effect does, if we come over here and we click anywhere on the footage, let's go ahead and click on uh, his ear here. It will place a circle, a little, little white circle. And if we take that and we drag it out, it starts warping our footage, which exactly as the name says you can automatically see the problem that we're running into. Not only does it affect what's in the frame, it sort of affects the frame itself. So we're not only adjusting his face, we're actually pushing out the sides of the footage also, which is not what we want. So I'm going to uh, undo a couple here. There we go, we're back to our original footage. And the way that we're going to do this so that we can just make the eyes larger is by setting limitations, uh, parameters, so to speak. Uh, the way that we do this is we hold down the shift key on our keyboard. So let me go ahead and do that. And instead of the white circles, you'll see that we have, now we have red circles. And again, that will set the limits that we have for our adjustments. So if I go in here, I add more points that we can add that we can use to make the adjustments. If we were to make one of those adjustments, you see it's not warping our entire footage. It doesn't go past these points. Of course, we can go off to the right hand side, but as you can tell, it's not affecting the rest of the footage. However, we can run into issues here and that's why we actually probably want to add some more points. And I'm trying to demonstrate that here. Now, if I come off to the right hand side here and where it says control visibility, let's change it from show to hide. And you can automatically tell what our problem is. It's extremely warped. It's not uniform. The pupil in the middle is sort of a square shape and that's not what we're going for. So let me show you how we get around that. Let me control Z out of here. Actually, what we can do is come over here, reset the node grade, because we are going to start from scratch. So I'll come over here, grab the warper tool. Now, as far as setting the distance, the limits that we want to set, let's not get them too close to the, the eye because we obviously we want to drag things out. So in other words, instead of maybe placing a couple points here, what we can do is place it a little farther away because what we'll do is add the white points closer to where the eye is. And what I've determined is that if you choose, uh, if you place eight of them, both for the ones that we can move and the limits, that's the best way to keep everything sort of uniform. So the way that I do it is I hold down the shift key, we'll do three across the top, actually. And what we can do, I accidentally placed that too close. If you do, you can just move it. So we'll hover over it and drag it out. So we'll do three across the top, one off to the side, and then three across the bottom, one off to the side. Same thing with the uh, left eye, to our right, his left eye, and then one, two, three across the bottom. Now we can get a little bit closer to the eye, as, as I mentioned, so we'll do that. We'll do one, two, three, one off to the side, one, two, three, 
and you can see they pretty much correspond with the limits that we're setting. So we can keep them in line, sort of, but obviously want them a little bit closer. So let's do that. And then one, two, three. Now let me show you something else. Now that we have all our points and all our limits set, if we come over here to where it says show, instead of warp points, we're gonna change that to warp vectors. And you can see that everything's pointing towards the top. That's not what we want, and I'll show you why. So let's change this to auto hide. Now what auto hide does is, obviously we can see everything, but if I were to grab one of these points and start moving it around, it will get everything out of the way, and that way we can make our adjustments without being distracted by all the points. So for example, if I left click here and I drag, There you go, now it's easier to make our adjustments. However, you can see that this one's pointing up. So even if I was to drag this to the outside, if I wanted to make the eye larger, because it's pointing the wrong direction, it's not acting the way that it should. So the way that we fix this is we take these arrows. First, we want to come back over here and change it to show so, we, so those don't disappear on us. So this might be a little bit difficult because the circles and the arrows are in the same space. So let's see if we can get this um, adjusted. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm kind of making those points point out to the limits. So there we go. Now in this case, what I did for that one is I actually grabbed the circle because those two circles were a little bit close. So it just made more sense to go ahead and grab the circle. All right, and these are pretty good, the ones across the top. Let me make a couple more adjustments here. They don't necessarily have to point to the limits, but we do want them all pointing away from the eye. So let me do that. And again, we can grab the circle and make the adjustment there if they're too close to the, um, the red limits. And you can see we almost inadvertently already made an adjustment. And what I mean by that is, let me go over here and change this to hide, come up here and disable all the effects. Actually, it's probably best that we just disable the node. And you can see his eyes are already a little bit larger. So let's come back over here, set it to auto hide. Because now that we have everything pointed in the right direction, Let's go ahead and make our adjustments. As I mentioned before, it's nice to have these many points because even if we were to warp it like this, we know we have additional points to sort of smooth it out. So you can see how that's not a circle. But if we come over here and do that, and then we have this one down here, we can pull it down, it gets more rounded. And we can just continue like that all the way around. Same thing with the other side. Let's make our adjustments. And again, just for a little side by side, I'll change it from auto hide to hide and disable the node. So that's, this is what it looked like before. And that's what it looks like now. Now we are going to run into an issue and I'll show you how to fix that quickly. If we were to play through the footage, take a look at his uh, pupils in the middle there. You can see how even the the color of his eyes, where it shifts a little bit. And the way that we're going to fix this is by tracking the footage so that it stays in place. So let's go ahead and drag it back to the beginning because that's where we made our adjustments. We'll come down to the bottom here where it says the tracker. Right now I already have it set to effects, but sometimes it's maybe on window. You can click the drop down and choose FX. We will come down to the bottom here and choose add a new point to track. So that's adding a tracker point. We click on that. It adds a nice little blue marker in the middle here. His mouth really doesn't move. Um, he Obviously he blinks his eyes, but here his mouth is in the frame. He doesn't turn to the side or anything. So that's a good track point. 
All right, so we'll set it there. We'll come over here to these tracker tools and I'll go ahead and click this uh, arrow here to track forward. All right, let's go ahead, bring it back to the beginning. I'll click off that node so we don't have that marker there. I'll zoom in a little bit using my middle mouse wheel, scroll wheel, and I'll play through. And you can see how that's a lot better. It's not shifting side to side in this footage. So there you go. As always, it probably took a lot longer to explain it than for you to actually do it. And that's how you can quickly do the large eye effect in Eminem's video for Godzilla. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.